Hello everyone, in this video, I will talk about what happens to your brain when flirting with the opposite sex. The skill to flirt is not something that everyone has, nor is it something that everyone does well. However, if you can flirt well, your body goes through a lot of changes. Here are some examples of what's going on underneath the surface when you're perfecting your best hair flip smile combination, including hormone changes, neurotransmitter activity, metabolic changes, and more. You indeed weren't an a flirter when you first tested it, and you might still believe that it's not your strong suit, but over time, many people have mastered the skills required to do it well. One of the key social-emotional skills is flirting. Like lying, it is a component of social-emotional intelligence. Being sociable and appealing in the world requires having this skill. More latest media examples, such as love movies and sentimental stories of soulmates, might occasionally be hard to acknowledge, especially if Cupid's arrows don't hit you all that hard. However, if you've ever been in love, you know that exaggerations about love aren't completely off the mark. Love is sometimes described as something you simply need to be able to recognize whenever it happens. So what effects does flirting have on our minds and bodies? Consider how you feel when you flirt, regardless of your intention. Being flirted with or flirting back is enjoyable. As we become older, there are fewer and fewer opportunities for engaging in lighthearted interactions with others and ultimately flirting is among the few opportunities we have left. Being flirted with also gives you a great boost of self-confidence. Flirting can leave you feeling fantastic because of how your brain chemistry works. So what are the unseen effects of flirting. Did you know that your dopamine levels increase when you flirt? Your heart starts to beat faster because of the chemicals released in your body and your brain is flooded with serotonin, the major hormone that controls happiness, well-being, and mood. Sometimes your body might also tense up when you're not used to flirting, but once you get the hang of it, the brain switches into attraction mode when the natural fear has vanished. Dopamine, a feel-good hormone, is created in both men and women, and the body starts to communicate with your flirting partner non-verbally. Men's vasopressin and women's oxytocin are two more hormones that influence attraction. Vasopressin sort of moves it into his body more, whereas oxytocin has to do with women creating trust. These hormones let the initial physical attraction develop into something more meaningful. Now the visible effects. Flirting takes on a new level while the hormones are in full swing because the body starts to send subliminal nonverbal signals. Eye contact is a significant one. Lengthy eye contact triggers the release of the hormone oxytocin, which helps people develop connections. The vision center of the brain sends the images it captures while you're gazing into each other's eyes to the hypothalamus, which controls oxytocin secretion and is engaged in intimate behavior. Oh. And if you keep eye contact with your date, you can see that their pupils are dilated, which is a sign of intimate attraction. Yay for you! Other messages are conveyed through body languages such as shrugging, which is a submissive gesture that indicates you're harmless, talking with your palms raised, which makes the other person feel at ease, leaning in their direction, which expresses interest, and partners imitating each other's actions to make them feel like they're on the same page. 
A signal that two people are developing a relationship and building trust is when they begin to laugh together. As you may have figured, oxytocin, our old friend, is also released when a bond develops between two flirts. When this happens to you, well, you're in luck. It might be the beginning of a good relationship. Flirting has numerous benefits for the brain as well. Flirting is a great way to get to know someone. It can lead to an interesting conversation and it makes you feel comfortable around someone who may have been intimidating before. Flirting also gives you an opportunity to practice your social skills, which are always important. Although flirting can be fun and entertaining, it could also be nerve-wracking, particularly if you're unsure of the other person's feelings for you. That's why it's important not to overdo it. Too much flirting can make people think that you're trying too hard or are making up for something else by trying too hard. Healthy flirting can do more than just help you catch your crush's eye, contrary to what you might have thought. I don't mean unhealthy flirting, but rather a flirtation that doesn't make the other person feel uneasy. Mutual flirting is ideal and it can be a highly effective means of evaluating your self-esteem. You heard that right. It is a good way to boost your confidence. Sometimes in life, we face situations that sap all of our confidence, but believe it or not, you could flirt your way through this moment of low confidence. That's right. We regain our confidence when we flirt while the other person reacts. Our sense of belonging and acceptance helps in regaining our lost confidence. All the body image problems and self-doubts start to disappear when you engage in healthy flirting. When we flirt, we often step beyond our comfort zones. Unknowingly, we make an effort to dismiss our own smallest self-doubts. When we hear back from the other person, our self-esteem increases. Flirting is a good approach to getting rid of negative self-talk. Flirting is an art. It's not just about looking attractive and making sure that your hair is in place. It's also about knowing how to use your body language and how to read someone else's body language as well. If you're afraid to try, do not, do not, do not worry. Your brain shields you from being rejected. Your brain helps you remember when you flirt that you should be cautious and a little hesitant rather than throwing yourself out there right away. Because flirting makes sense as a way to test the waters, it's smart to use it as a shield. Jumping in with both feet could, after all, raise the chances that your heart will be broken. Your brain's anterior cortex is the area that detects rejection and it also serves as a reminder to remember not to jump in too quickly. That's it for now. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and drop a like and a comment if this video was helpful. See you at the next one.